Welcome to episode XX3 of What Should We Read This Weekend with your commentators, Rachel Chapman and Marie Southwell. This week we are talking about Super Bowl sports. Yes, we are. A clap track. This week is all about sports because we know that it is Super Bowl this Sunday. And I'm in it for the snacks and the commercials. So and the puppy bowl. And I certainly hope they make all the baskets they want. <laughs> Let's hope she can. Oh sure. anyway. Um, so today we are focusing on Super Bowl Super Sports, Super Bowl Sports. And our we have um four books and of course we're going to run into overtime because this is our sports episode. Rachel do you want to tell our viewers what books are we talking about today? Sure this week we are featuring Before the Ever After by Jacqueline Woodson, Running with Lions by Julian Winters, Patina by Jason Reynolds, We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Berry, and a special overtime pick to be announced later, Marie. Yeah, we're not going to know until we're in overtime. All right. I think you're first up. Tell us what about this book. Yeah, before the ever after. So if you don't know anything about Marie and I, uh, I was a little hesitant about sports books. And then I had to convince Marie that we could do sports books. Um, we are not the sports books typical audience, but I think we've picked, um, we couldn't even narrow it down. To, we couldn't even narrow it down to four. Um, but this book before the ever after by Jacqueline Woodson, I actually had to add another shelf on my Goodreads account for this book because I didn't have a, a shelf for sports. I would not consider myself into sports, um, but I do love Jacqueline Woodson. So I couldn't resist. Uh, and I definitely wasn't prepared for the amount of emotion that this book <laughs> brought me um, from a sports book. Um, our narrator, ZJ, uh, is, a, is very into poetry and music. Uh, this book is a novel in verse, which um, lends itself very appropriately to a novel in verse. Not all of them do. But because ZJ is a poet himself, it just, it makes it work. Um, and he brings all this emotion to the surface as he watches his dad go from literally the neighborhood's favorite dad. All of his friends love his dad. They love going to his house to, he becomes like this unfamiliar man. You see, ZJ's dad was a professional football player um, until he was, benched after a few tackles. Um, and then after a few more games, um, was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury. Uh, and it started to affect more than just his game. Um, so this is a totally different side of sports novels. Um, if you've read, there's a nonfiction book that came out a few years ago, fourth down and in inches, um, about traumatic brain injuries. Uh, it kind of tells the science of it. But before the ever after tells the uh, like emotional impact that it has on that traumatic brain injuries have on family members and lovers of sports. And I just, I, I felt like this was, this was an awesome book. It just recently got the Coretta, Sk Coretta Scott King, um, I think is an honor. Um, and it was amazing. It, it was written in verse. I listened to it on audiobook, and I would highly recommend it on audiobook as well. Like a friendship pop. Maybe oh, it's me again. I know how interesting. All right, maybe tell us about our second book then. <laughs> um, our second book is Patina by Jason Reynolds, and this book is technically book two in the track series that he wrote. Um, but it's my favorite and it doesn't matter um, if you read them. I didn't think that it mattered if you read them in order. 
uh, one of my library school besties, I'm stealing this quote um, from her about the series. She says that he, Jason Reynolds writes these books like metaphorical batons. Like they're, they're passing, uh, it's like one student is passing, one character is passing the, literally the baton off to the next. Each of them are told from a different point of view and they all end on a cliffhanger. So again, this is about track and this has to do, um, this book features Patina or Patty. She's our main character and our heroine and she's a runner, again, track. Um, she runs to escape the bullies at school. She runs because she's really frustrated about her current living situation. She just had to um, stop living with her mom and move out because her mom has diabetes and that has made her so weak that she is unable to keep caring for her kids. Um, and she's running because her mom can't. Uh, our girl Patty is stressed. Uh, I could totally relate to this. I am not very athletic, but I did go through a period of time where I was running from a lot of my problems, both uh, literally and uh, metaphorically. metaphorically. Um, so Coach, who it's all in all of the books, wants Patty to be in the relay, but Patty is not really at a point where she is willing to trust any of her new teammates. But coach does not tolerate bad attitudes. So Patty is going to have to check herself. Uh, and so this is like, there's just so many stories in one. As Marie would say, I love this book because I really um, love how Jason Reynolds uh, values all different types of families, no matter how they look. Um, I love the gentleness and nuance that he brings uh, to his writing even when he's writing about childhood trauma and anxiety and grief um, and just the way that uh, all of the characters in this series, it's Ghost, Patina, Sunny, and Lou. Those are the four characters um, and how relatable they are for young people. So highly recommend Patina. It's my favorite of the four. Um, I think I say things I liked about this book, but I don't mind even being misquoted. Okay, so the book, I'm talking about three books. I'm here to talk about Running With Lions. It's also part of our LGBT Writers in the School program. So you can read it online. Um, all right, so Sebastian Hughes is the main character. And as you can imagine, no, you can't imagine because I haven't told you, he's been dumped by his college age girlfriend. Um, he is just finished his senior year. He is really looking forward to his soccer training camp and um, becoming captain that year and playing with all these players that he feels like are his family, which I think that picture kind of captures. The problem is there is a complication or a problem. Enter Amir. Now, Amir is a super handsome British Pakistani recruit. And to make it more compli complicated, he's former be best friends with Sebastian. So he has this very complicated backstory. Um, and Amir is a really good player, but he has a horrible attitude and um, it causes a lot of trouble on the team. So basically, I'm not going to do any spoilers, but um, Sebastian has to figure out how to deal with um, Amir and his growing attraction, as well as how to, um, you know, keep playing soccer and have a good team. This book is a great sports book if you like soccer. I think Julianne Winters either really researched soccer or play soccer because I found a lot of what happened in the book um, super realistic to what I know about soccer. Um, and I also love that he created this world where uh, gay, straight, Whatever you are, the power to a really good team only happens when you become comfortable with yourself, which I think is the central message in, um, in the book, which is kind of like different than what you might think of a, a normal sports book. So I highly recommend it and um, I definitely enjoyed it. Oh, oh, so look, look, this book, 
says, hello, Marie Southwell, please read me. And let me give you the reasons I love it right up front. It's a historical fiction that takes place in 1980. You guys all know how I feel about that. I was a kid in 1980. Is it really historical fiction? Yes, okay. So it's taking place in 1980. Um, and it's kind of like Mean Girls 1980 meets the craft 1980s. Um, it has, um, I love it because the, the writer deals with really complex uh, characters. They're all women of color. They have very complex relationships with their right, white neighbors and peers. Um, they look at gender norms, which let me tell you in the 80s was a big deal, race, um, sexuality and friendship. And I'll tell you, uh, and witchcraft, which I'll give you what I think the central theme of this book is in just one moment. So basically it's 300 years later and Danvers, Massachusetts is home to the famous witch trials, but a new coven has arisen. And what happens is the female hockey team is continually, um, field hockey, not like ice hockey, um, is continually losing. So the goalie, Mel, decides she is going to make a dark pledge in her notebook that has a picture of Emilio Estevez on the front. So she makes this dark pledge. Again, I told you this is very fun 80s. So she signs her name in the book, right? And guess what happens? When you make a pledge with an alternative God, as they start calling him, Emilio Estevez, he delivers and they won. And eventually- this book endorsed by Emilio Estevez? But he should endorse it because it's really, that's a good question. I love it. Um, so he, so basically eventually because- all the, all the whole team, the three, the three friends sign the book. But I mean, anyone who knows anything that if you make a deal with the devil, there's gonna be something to pay, right? <clears throat> and so this chaos starts ensuing and there's all kinds of like complications. And um, the thing I loved about uh, the book, besides all those things I, I said before that I loved is that it really, um, for me, it was like witchcraft became a metaphor for like how to take up space in a world that wants to keep you small. So um, I really, I, I of course endorsed that central theme and it was like such a fun read and it was really quite surprising. And it won an Alex award, this is the YME. So great job. I hope we get more from this writer. Yeah, the Alex award is are books that are written right. for adults, but have appeal for young adults. So this, and I, I think this was a good one. Yeah, some of the criticism was it should have been a YA book. So there you go. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. It was really quite delightful. All right. So are you ready for our overtime <laughs> selection? We gotta make the basket. Woo the game. Woo All right, so heroin. By uh, Mindy McGinnis, I refuse to let Rachel take this off my list. I said I would talk it really fast. Um, uh, so basically, Mickey, the main, main character, main, the main, main character, main character is passing for being white, although she is Puerto Rican, Latina, act, Latinx. Um, she's having this awesome winning season. She's hanging out with her best friend until the next thing she knows her whole life is upside down because she's in this really severe automobile accident. And um, she ends up going into um, surgery and then being prescribed painkillers after it. And she becomes addicted to painkillers. So uh, as each, she becomes more and more addicted as she finds that she can't do any of the things that she loved um without the painkillers i think this is a super timely book because we do have a horrible heroin epidemic but it also really gave you kind of like uh if you've ever asked yourself well like how could you become addicted i think this kind of shows how easy it is to slide down the slope and um how it's not always necessarily about the pain it also could be about the physical pain 
So I incredibly enjoyed this and I recommend it for anyone who would like to read a little more about sports. Oh, did I say the sport was softball? Yeah. Yes, oh. softball. And the sport they're playing is softball and she's better than the boys team. Softball. Oh yeah, there's that whole thing. Well, that's all we have time for today, commentator Marie. Thank um, you. You can get all of the books we talked about today on Sora or on Libby um, or from, from the public library. If you are new to ebooks, be sure to reach out to your librarian or you can reach out to one of us. All of the book titles and the show notes will be available on our website, bit.ly slash WTRTW2020. And next week's episode, we will feature books about the Lunar New Year because it will be we released are? on <laughs> it will be released on February 12th, which is the Lunar New Year. <laughs>